up, everybody? OCD Mikey here for another edition of The Mikey Show. Your favorite black sheep. Uh, let's see, I'm holding the camera in my hand, so I can't do the punch into the fist, into the hand. But anyways, your favorite black sheep in the audio industry. Um, why am I a black sheep? Because I break the mold. I ram my head and break the mold. The speaker here that I'm showing you right in the middle, the Fisher & Fisher SM770i, is another example of what I like to do for you guys, which is bring in disruptive products. What do I mean by disruptive? I mean disruptive because they shatter your idea of what value is. You guys know if you go look around, there's plenty of $100,000 speakers. Uh, this panel right here, it's thirty-five grand. but the way this came, I needed to fix it, and all panels need subwoofers. So this big rig took many years of putting something together, and it's got many moving parts. There's an active crossover. You can see all the cables. I've got four amps per side, one for these, three for these. So it's very involved. What I need is a solution that I can sell to you guys that is reference level, that can match this or at least come really close, and that can be in a single box that you can power with a single stereo amp. So that's what you see me doing here is I'm after that uh, speaker. I'm after something that I can sell you that is true reference level. And I'm using a world-class reference to compare to these to bring you the best I can. And what you see here is the Fisher & Fisher 770. I'm going to come in a little closer so you can sort of see. And I'll do another video probably a little better right now. Again, I don't have lights. I don't have all that stuff. I'm not trying to glam it up. Okay, because I'm not a promotion channel. Okay, these companies don't pay me to do this stuff, but I do sell this. This is basically me promoting my business. Okay, I'm a dealer, I sell you guys this stuff, and I pride myself in bringing you stuff that you can't get anywhere else gear you can't get from anybody else. And gear, there's a reason, there's a reason, and there's a strong value. The stuff you get from everybody, the things that everybody have is the highest profit items, okay? So anyways, here we go in. We're gonna look at this uh, here. And what you're seeing, you see those white things in the front? Those are striations from stone, or there's probably a you know a better term, scientific term for what those things are, veins or whatever the hell you use when you're talking about stone. But this is slate. This is 100% natural slate. Now, this is not cheap Chinese slate or Indian slate. This is actually from Germany, two kilometers from where this company is, resides, Fisher & Fisher, which is in Schmallenberg, Germany. Okay, and all the drivers, it doesn't use cheap AMTs from China. It doesn't use cheap drivers. These are all German drivers. So these guys are very proud to make sure that their product is 100% made in Germany. No playing around. They're not trying to gouge you by putting Chinese drivers in Indian slate and then assembling it in Germany, okay? Because there's a difference between the companies that actually have integrity in manufacture and other ones that are just profiteering, okay? So, and, and, and I'm just kind of explaining that so you understand the difference, okay? I'm not trying to say anything more. Okay, what you see here is a three-module speaker. If I step back, okay, you're going to see how tall it is in comparison to the seven-foot planers, okay? So they're, they're over five feet tall, there may be 5'4", something like that, which you really don't need anything taller. And some people ask, why is there a base on the top? Well, the reason there's a base driver on top is so that you have your tweeter at your proper height. If we put another base driver down here, it would raise the tweeter up. Then we'd have to do something like Wilson does where they tilt the tweeter down. Okay, so this is ear level with the tweeter. So you don't have to aim the tweeter down and do all that crazy stuff like Wilson does with their speakers. As an example, there's some other companies that will put the tweeter up high and then you just bend it down. Okay. You can bend these down if you want to. The whole cab just bends a little bit because it's got feet on the bottom that are adjustable. So that means you can raise the back up, lower the front, and then you can aim something down. But there's no need for that with these. Okay. So why is why is stone significant? Why is it is it is it good to have stone and not MDF or Baltic birch? Because stone 
It's inert. You know, I mean, this stuff does not vibrate with the drivers. You're not making it, you're not exciting the cabinet, okay? So stone is always good. Why is slate preferred? Why do I think slate is a better stone than, say, granite? Granite is much harder. There's also people that make speakers out of glass, okay? Very uh, stiff material. Same with granite. Uh, and it's it's hard material. So you get a different sound than you do from slate, which is layers. It's a shell. It's layers of compressed mud that's millions of years old that is, you know, whatever, petrified, calcified, whatever. I don't have the proper terms for it. Um, but, you know, and, and you can see, even though it's layered, it's not like loose layers. This is dense, dense layers. But this is mud from the dinosaur era. Um, it's beautiful, natural stone. So the cabinets are inert. They do not resonate. Okay, that's very important. That's why people make such big wooden ones. Like you look at Magico is all aluminum, you know, one giant aluminum speaker. These guys have done, Fisher & Fisher, is they put it in modules. So nothing's heavier than, say, like 170 pounds, 150 pounds. So this can be lifted with two people with ease. It's not that hard to set these up. Even me, I lift these with, I lifted these with another guy that's over 50, and we both put these things together with ease, okay? I brought all the boxes in by myself, okay, with a, with a hand cart. It's not the same as, say, a Magico that's this tall, that holy shit, I can't even imagine how heavy that would be, because it's one piece. You can't break it down. This you can break down. So in terms of ease of install, I think these are easier than an equivalent five foot, five foot four tall speaker of an equivalent stature in build quality. That's 350 plus or, 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 or more. Um, it makes it easier to move is basically what I'm getting at. Okay. Now, another thing that makes the Fisher and Fisher, why I like the Fisher and Fisher, why I think it's better than its counterparts and then its competition is I will walk around and show you something. What you see back here are open mid ranges. Okay. There, there's just a tunnel and then it's got a nice fabric cover on it and a port that goes straight to the back of the of the uh, mid-range so your mid-ranges have a port that comes to here and they have a back wave okay so again you can see the striations or the layers of that natural stone which is beautiful it, you down here you've got two different ways to hook this up if you want to bypass the internal crossovers and you want to triumph these things you can triumph these using active crossover if you like so there's there's versatility here Okay, that's that's one thing, is that there's versatility in how you hook it up. It's not just, oh, you've got one choice of how to hook it up. You can hook it up more than more than one way. I'll tell you why I think Fisher & Fisher is so great. And it breaks down to three separate main points. One, stone cabinet. So there's zero resonance in this cabinet. Two, open mid-ranges. So it images like a panel. Three, like something that panels can't do is have directivity and precise instrument placement and dynamic punch, really. The dynamic punch from a point source is better than a panel. A panel is just, it can barely move. These things are much more punchy. They're way better in the mid, in the mid base. Okay, mid base. And, and, and that's just something about how they're tuned. Fisher and Fishers are tuned for really good mid bass. So you can juice them up and you get this tonal bass quality that you just don't get from speakers that are just all lows and all highs. It's hard. Very few speakers, most speakers in the industry have a carve out in the mid bass region. These do not. So between stone cabinets, open mids, and uh, point source drivers, I think those three things give the Fisher & Fisher a great advantage amongst other speakers that are made with wood or even against panels, which always require subwoofers, okay? So this is something, it puts everything together in one package with a beautiful natural stone that is absolutely gorgeous. The final coup de grace on this speaker and why I think it's so great is the price. This could easily be an $80,000 speaker. 
Okay, the way things are priced in here, we got Macintosh just released $100,000 subwoofers. You know, it's ridiculous. You've got $365,000 Wilsons. <laughs> you know, give me a break. You've got Magicals that are half a million dollars and all this other bullshit. You know, Magicals that are, that are freaking three feet tall like this that are 90 grand. Okay, and yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I, uh, um, I don't like them. Okay, am I saying they're bad? No. Do I think they're a value? Absolutely not. I don't think there's anything value about Magico. I don't think there's anything value about Wilson. I don't I don't I just don't think there's value in those speakers, okay? I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying they're overpriced in my opinion. So here's something that could easily be 80 grand based on all the other things if we look at comparables. We look at other stone speakers how expensive they are. These things are only 40k. That's it. 40k. That's why I'm a black sheep, because I bring products like this that make you question your magical, that make you question buying Wilson, that make you question those other brands and say, you know, what am I getting for my money? You know, what am I getting? I'm a, you, you know, and, and you have to ask yourself and see, where do you want to put your money? You want to throw it all into speakers or do you want to uh, get speakers and a $20,000 front end, you know, a $24,000 front end? And a $35,000 amp, you know, which I sell for less. But nonetheless, the Viola Lab is a phenomenal match for these. The Playback Designs is a great front end. And together, it's really killer sound. And all we've got is one, two, three, and then the speakers. So we got three pieces and the speakers. I like to keep it simple. And very soon you will see. The only reason this room is like this is because... It's taken a long time. I was in the pursuit of the absolute best. And so with those panels, I had to create it. I had to put a third tweeter. That tweeter did not come with the speakers. That was a baffle that we cut. We put a MagnaPan tweeter in there. We turned this into a two-way into a three-way because it needed help, okay? And then, and then you need to augment with subwoofers to give these things to, to make it proper. But with these things, I am coming extremely close, extremely close. And while these break in, which they're doing right now, we will see how close can we get it. Is it going to be close enough that I can get rid of my panels and simplify the rig? I would love to do that. But so far, nothing can meet the sonic incredibility of the panels with those subs. So I'm in a uh, journey to replace them. And I'm bringing you guys with, and this is very, very close at this point, and only 40K. Uh, so it's a great value. I thought I'd take this time to just tell you a little bit more about the Fisher & Fisher. I will do another video and get more in depth. But that's that. If you like my channel, please subscribe, uh, and I'll keep bringing you great content. Thanks for joining. See you.